Live from New York, it's theCUBE, covering Riverbed Disrupt. Brought to you by Riverbed. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to New York City, everybody. We're here at Riverbed Disrupt. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Paul O'Farrell is here as the Senior Vice President and General Manager at Riverbed. Paul, welcome to theCUBE. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming on. Networking needs a fundamental rethink. Why? Well, if you think about it, um, there's been so much change in, in the IT industry and technology over the last you know, five, 10 years, however far you want to go back. And somewhere along the line, networking just got stuck in a time warp. And if you think about sort of every aspect of your daily life, whether it's, you know, the, the kind of hackneyed examples from the consumer world like ordering an Uber or using something to order food or whatever it is you do every day, all of that has changed. Um, but for network administrators, life looks pretty much the way it was back in the uh, you know, 10 years ago, maybe even 20 years ago when the first riders sort of really went mainstream. And it's really taking a lot of that technology and bringing it into the cloud era that we think is, uh, is what the industry needs right now. So you're responsible for the Steel Head, the Steel Connect, and the Steel Fusion portfolios. That's right. Uh, which is the, the vast majority of the company's portfolios. Yeah. So take us through them, because many people in our audience aren't familiar with the product set. Anyway. Sure. Everybody knows Riverbed and yep. you're familiar with the company, but talk about the products a little bit. Yeah, so Steelhead, which was our original product, was kind of the flagship product of the company. And Steelhead, was start, we, we sold the first Steelhead back in uh, 2004. And that product was really designed around helping enterprises to consolidate their IT infrastructure out of remote locations and consolidate it into the data center through a variety of different optimization techniques. And that product really caught on and it's deployed in, I don't know the latest stats, but probably about 97% of, of the global 2000 companies. So it's been a very successful company, a very successful product. And what we've done is we've evolved that set of technologies over time we created a new product in 2012 called Steel Fusion. Steel Fusion is a product that's designed to allow you to do all of the things you could do with the Steel Ed, but also allow you to run applications locally in the branch. So while having your data physically resident in a data center in the cloud. So there's a certain family of applications that for a variety of reasons still need to run in, on, in the remote location in the branch and it's enabling that in a highly secure fashion that also has some benefits around efficient ways you can run a branch office. So if an application goes down, you can recover it very fast. Um, if, an if you want to provision new applications, you can do that essentially instantly as well. So this is Steel Fusion product family. And then finally, the, the, the latest addition to the product family is the Steel Connect product, which is started off as this concept of a software-defined wide area networking offering. And then it's really evolved, um, particularly with the acquisition we did. We did an acquisition of a, of, a, of a small but highly innovative company based in Germany at the beginning of the year called Ocedo. And they not only accelerated our entry into this new market of software-defined WAN, they also gave us a much broader and more expansive vision around what we could do with networking, which includes an entirely new way of thinking about how do you manage networks with a single management console for managing LAN, WAN, and cloud. So Aceto allowed you to eliminate that manager of managers that you talked about uh, on Yeah, stage. that, was, that, that right? was part of it. I mean, I think we were already quite far down the path of building our own software-defined WAN solution. And what Aceto did was, not only did they accelerate us in that effort, but they gave us a very powerful management console. They gave us a cloud-based management console that you could use to manage every aspect of your network and do that centrally with a very either one or, or a very small number of, of uh, trained professionals. You, you'd really be able to design, deploy, and operate your network without ever touching a box. I and mean, you can imagine drop shipping a box, be it a gateway, a switch, a Wi-Fi access point into a remote location, have it authenticate itself, and just start passing traffic. So yes, the, the management console was really key mm -hmm. part of the story. So, 
Paul, one of the things that, that resonated with me that you said this morning yeah. is it, it's a cloud-centric workflow is what we need. Sure. So can, can you talk about how not just you're putting things in the cloud, but how kind of the cloud operations model you know, goes across your whole portfolio? Absolutely. Um, if you think about you know, what's happened since Amazon Web Services was first launched 10 years ago, um, and obviously there's plenty of other players in the market, you know, people like Azure and IBM and all the, all the tech, tech, uh, large tech companies have some form of cloud offering. And you think about what you can do now as an IT professional. So an IT professional can be asked in the morning to spin up servers, storage, and an application in multiple countries and have it done by the afternoon. You, know? you can ask an IT professional to do that. You couldn't have done that 10 years ago. They would have said, you're completely crazy. I can't possibly do that. But you can do that with platforms like AWS, with Azure, with Google. Um, what you can't do is spin up your network or manage your network or configure your network with that ease. At least you couldn't do that before we launched the Steel Connect product. So a lot of what we're about is really taking that cloud-centric workflow, the type of workflow that people have gotten used to, whether they're using consumer products or whether they're using some of these uh, more modern cloud-based IT solutions, and really mimic that and make it feel like the same type of intuitive way to configure things, the same type of sort of simple, centralized approach, automated approach, policy-based approach to managing the and, network. And, and when you talk about kind of the buyer of it, because networking, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think when SDN first came out, yeah. one of my critiques was, it solves networking problems. Yep. It doesn't necessarily solve business problems. It, yes. It's advanced beyond yep. that, but talk about kind of the, the, the business buyer and the applications and how you, you focus on that. Sure, I mean, I think the old joke about SDN was that, um, you know, it really was in, is something in search of, of a, you know, technology in search of a, of a problem. It, it did, I mean, the, the SDN really got, in many ways, did provide some benefits to data center architectures. So people who really implemented the, the, the SDN, SDN approach in the data center were able to benefit from some streamlined operations of, 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 uh, of, of their environments. But that really got, you know, there was no attempt really to apply that thinking until today really to the white area network or to the world where most of the network administrator's time is actually spent trying to ensure that the right type of connectivity is available in the branch. And um, so a lot of what we're talking about is really trying to extend that thinking and paradigm to, to the white area network, to remote locations, to the overall enterprise network. You talked a lot this morning about the branch. Mm -hmm. and how that's transforming and the different models that yep. you pursue with the branch. So give us some color on that. Sure, so the important thing to remember is when Riverbed talks about branches, we don't mean something small. We really mean about the place where you run your business, where business gets done. So whether you call it a branch, a site, a location, a Division, network, no, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, okay. It can be a factory, it can be an oil rig, it can be you know, a retail store with you know, half a million square feet of uh, retail capacity. So. Um, what we've recognized is that obviously there's different flavors of branches, there's different sets of requirement, there's different types of infrastructure footprint in those locations. And what we've tried to put together in the solution we announced today, solution set, which is the Cloud Ready Branch solution set, is an attempt to bring the richness of all of our technology across the different products and really combine that in a new packaging that addresses specific needs of different types of branch. So, the quick examples would be you've got internet branches, so these are branches that are at their most evolved state of cloud adoption where they've really moved to all cloud SaaS based applications. They really don't have any need other than internet access for, or cloud access for, for networking. And then of course you need some visibility there too. There's a second generation of branches which are what we call hybrid branches which have more dependence on traditional applications, client server applications that are still served out of the data center, and that's where we would add the ability to do some one optimization. And the third category is where you still have the heaviest sort of infrastructure footprint, and that's where we position, we, we, we call that, or we, our desire is to turn that into something called a stateless branch, where you can run that in a way that doesn't constrain you in any way in terms of the types of applications or the type of workloads or the way you consume those applications but can all be managed in a software-defined manner that is centrally administered and policy-based and automated. 
I want to ask you about this whole trend toward hyper-converged. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, many of the hyper-converged players are very storage yep. heavy. They're essentially storage companies mm -hmm. and they do some partnerships with the networking and server companies and they say, okay, you can eliminate all this complexity and yep. boom. How, how, what's your point of view on that whole hyper-converged infrastructure? You participate in some way, shape, or form there. You're mm -hmm. kind of storage light, if you yep. will. Give us Riverbed's point of view. Yeah, so hyper-converged infrastructure, again, is kind of like SDN sort of is very much sort of trapped in the data center right now. If you look at most of the players, whether they be the big vendors like EMC or others, IBM or Cisco, it really is a data center play. It's about combining in a new form factor in a slightly more integrated manner, storage, server, and network um, infrastructure. What we think is it's really about extending some of that value of hyperconverged infrastructure out to the edge out to the branch where, where we really spend a lot of our, our focus, or turn a lot of our focus, and being able to do that in a way that still allows you to manage that branch. We like the idea of a stateless branch. So you can manage a branch with a full, fully hyper-converged stack. So we have a solution around storage, a solution around server um, or compute power, and then some networking as well. But deliver that in a way that doesn't require you to have any IT expertise on site. So all of that can be centrally managed. All of your data is physically resonant in a data center or a cloud, but is made available to applications working on the edge. So it's kind of like your, a smartphone. So if you think about a smartphone, we think this is probably the best analogy, but if you think about a smartphone, if you've got it backed up correctly, you go on a business trip and you lose it, uh, you can get out the other end of your business trip, be it in another city, and you can go into your local service provider, AT&T, Verizon, and you can basically be up and running, you'll be $700 poorer afterwards with all of your applications, all of your data, as long as you backed it up to the cloud. And that's the way we, we believe branches should operate too. You shouldn't require, it shouldn't require the existence of any of the traditional sort of server storage backup, our, backup infrastructure and you should be able to provision them and recover them as if they were a smartphone. So a branch is a location, yeah. um, and it can be anything. It was a factory, an oil rig, it can be a windmill. Um, Absolutely. So we talked a lot about yeah. uh, a digital transformation mm -hmm. this morning. IOT never came up, at least not that I heard, but yeah. a lot about the edge, and the edge is sure. critical for IOT. Is that just a, not a market that you're ready to pursue yet? Is that sort of a a couple years out? Sure, I mean, I think that we've sell, set ourselves a, sort of a, a near-term mission of transforming the way enterprise networks are managed and really bringing, as we said earlier, enterprise networks into the cloud era. That's a pretty big and bold goal for us. Chew um, on that we're for competing, a while. We're competing, I'll <laughs> chew on that for a while, that's a good way of thinking <laughs> yeah. about it. So, so we're going to be competing with some, uh, some of the biggest uh, you know, tech vendors in the world, people who have been at this for 20 years. So that's going to keep us busy for a while. There is absolutely no reason why, we talk a lot about scalability because enterprises need scalability, particularly in data centers. But there's no reason why you can't take our technology and then apply it also um, in, in a different scale in the branch. And so go to the level of having you know, thousands of access points um, to capture IoT information. And that's something we're definitely interested in doing. It just hasn't, it's just not on the immediate roadmap. Um, but IoT is definitely one of the reasons why you need a centralized, cloud-centric approach and an automated policy-based approach to managing your network infrastructure. If you're going to have, you know, literally, you're not talking about hundreds or thousands of branches now, you're potentially talking about the equivalent of tens of thousands of locations, sites, nodes on your network where you're going to have to be managing traffic. So. So, Paul, uh, this morning Jerry said that the SteelConnect 2.0 will be the diamond in the crown of the Riverbed portfolio. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I know you had the engineers working, you know, no vacations yep. to get from the 1.0 in April yep. to the 2.0 that, that's launching soon. It, talk to us a little bit about, you know, you gave a little bit of the roadmap going forward. What do you mm -hmm. expect from the SteelConnect 2.0? You know, when does it become a billion dollar product on its own? Uh. Well, I think, I think it definitely has the potential to do that. I think um, we talked a little bit um, this morning about how much initial demand we've seen. We've been very encouraged by the fact that even though we went out with a limited availability launch, it's not something Riverbed's done before, but we're going into a new market and we're kind of trying to make sure that we really understand the use cases and customer requirements. But based on that, we've seen huge interest. And, and what really sort of 
it was a pleasant surprise. A lot of that interest is coming from some of the biggest corporations and organizations in the world. So there's a lot of pent-up demand for a new approach to networking. 2016 was really about you know, getting the product to a point where it is scalable, it is robust, it is fully featured. And we think that certainly by the end of this year, we're, we're, we'll be well, you know, well along the path of doing that. And we have a very much competitive product that can go up against uh, some of the new startup pure play SD-WAN vendors, but more importantly, up against the traditional networking incumbents. Um, next year is really about taking that to the next level. We talked a little bit about how we're beginning down the path of uh, really tight integration with our visibility suite. There'll be a lot more of that going forward. Extending the platform to support third-party services. So we had um, Nir Zuk, the founder of Palo Alto Networks, on stage this morning at the event. And that's a partnership we're very excited about. There'll be a lot of other partnerships like that where we have the concept of a service chain of different services from third parties either on cloud or on box uh, going forward. And then it's really about um, sort of further integration of the overall platform into sort of bite-sized pieces that, uh, that, our com that our customers can consume in a simple manner. Paul, when you're a one product company, mm -hmm. um, you've got, you can have very high net promoter scores, your yep. engineering resource is very focused, your sales sure. team is, is focused. When you shift to a multi-product yep. platform company, what are some of the challenges that you face and how have you navigated those? Well, I think Riverbed as a company, so we're what, um, we started in, we're 14 years old now, we started in 2002. Um, we've already gone through that cycle at some level. We're, we are kind of Riverbed 2.0, so as you, as you may know, we went private last year, and yeah. as part of going private, we kind of rationalized our portfolio. So we had already shifted from being a single product company some time ago. Our first real uh, diversification into a new product area was back in 2007, 2008, when we did our first acquisition. Um, what we found that was challenging as you become a multi-product company, as you make that shift from a single product company, all the things you talked about, the real challenge though is if you, if you start off with a blockbuster first product, then the expectation is everything else will be like that. And that Steelhead really was a blockbuster first product. Right. It's a product um, that as we mentioned earlier is adopted, as was adopted by just about 85% you know, of, uh, of the global, global 2000, I think is our latest stats. And, um, so we, so I think what happens is you end up in a situation where if you're not careful, you can defocus your sales force, you can spread your R&D investments too thin. But I think we've already experienced the challenges of that. We're coming out of that original attempt at diversification in a much tighter, um, with a much tighter organization and a much um, you know, focus, more focused strategy. And the products that we're bringing out now, whether it be the evolution of Steelhead so that it's better suited to the cloud environment, whether it's bringing the Steel Fusion product m to more customers and making it a more of a mainstream offering, or whether it's this new product, Steel Connect, they're all linked around some basic concepts. And part of launching this Cloud Ready Branch initiative today was really to give us a simpler way of talking to our customers about our technologies and weaving them into one coherent um, story that, that makes it easy for people to understand them and to make the maximum use of them. And you've been a very acquisitive company, and, and yep. by all accounts, uh, it's been quite successful, mm -hmm. although early on you were under the spotlight of the public markets sure. and you got a lot of sure. you know, scrutiny there. Do you feel like you're perfecting that M&A model? Um, and and yes. do you guys look at yourselves as aspiring to be one of the top yeah acquirers in the business? Yeah, so I, I personally have a long history in, of acquisitions. I did acquisitions at Cisco in the heyday. Um, I was at Cisco when we were doing two acquisitions a month. I did, uh, did acquisitions also at NetApp for some period of time. I think at Riverbed I've seen probably the most focused and successful acquisition strategy of, of all of the companies I've worked at. Because we have a very sort of focused vision around where we want to be as a company and the markets we want to go after, and I think we're going to get better at that. It's, it, it is a little bit easier as a private company to do these things because you're not on that constant quarterly treadmill where you know, one misstep is, it causes sort of a major change in your market cap and causes people to question the, the logic of some of your strategy. Being private makes it a little bit easier. It allows us to make some of these changes to our strategy to expand into new markets, 
in a controlled manner, in a thoughtful manner, without being constantly second guessed by, by uh, Wall Street analysts. So I think it's a little bit easier. Doesn't really remove any of the, you know, we still need to hit our number every quarter and we still need to be, you know, gain market share and uh, win in the markets we're in, but it definitely helps us from uh, just that, that quarterly constant Well, uh, but then if you miss, it's not as much of a distraction. And if you blow it away, it's not as much of a exactly. distraction it's, either. Exactly, it's, um, yeah. it's, it's, you're absolutely right. It's really the distraction factor more than anything else. It's not that we necessarily changed our strategy that much, even as a public company, based on quarterly results, but it was very distracting if you have analysts constantly second guessing what you're doing. Uh, and it's just an easier way to operate, at least for the time being, as we sort of evolve the company a little bit further. Okay, we're, last question, we're out of time, but so look out, you know, a couple years, two, mm -hmm. three years, what, what should we expect Riverbed to look like? Well, I think you're going to see a, um, a company that is, um, has a, a diversified product portfolio, but a product portfolio that's presented the market in a very integrated, as part of a very integrated story. I think we'll keep our, our vision around how do you manage and how do you support highly distributed organizations. Um, I think we do really believe that there's an opportunity, a huge opportunity for Riverbed and for its customers to really rethink enterprise networking. We think there, if we're successful, there'll be a much more powerful way to manage networks that is much more in tune with the way people have have uh, grown to um, manage or learned how to manage other parts of the IT infrastructure stack. And that's really what our Steel Connect strategy is all about. And all of that will be supported by a single visibility, um, sort of end-to-end, -end, click to disk type of visibility credit uh, capabilities very embedded. So I think that's going to be a, a big force in the technology industry. And I think um, it's going to be an exciting place to be. Um, for, for us and for, we hope, our customers and partners as well. All right, we'll leave it there. Paul, thanks okay. very much Thank for coming on theCUBE. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's been okay, a keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. We're live from New York City. This is Riverbed Disrupt. This is theCUBE, right back. <laughs>